Right, welcome back. Yeah, so we continue with uh, part ten of uh, this chapter four. Okay, so we have rearranged this equation. Okay, rearranged. So we have this element here without the g, and this element with g. Yeah, this is where we stopped in the previous clip. Okay, so continuing. Yeah, what we do is okay, we. Right, and we come to this IGR. Yeah? IGR is uh, internal growth rate, the rate of growth in sales and assets funded only with internally generated funds, yeah? retained earnings equity, and no external funds. So when you have this condition, then based on the equation that we have seen earlier, yeah? then EFN is zero because there's no external funds. And this G, yeah, the growth rate is called, the growth rate when EFN is zero is IGR, yeah, or internal growth rate. So we replace these two in that equation, okay, that means EFN is zero, and this G yeah, becomes IGR, right? So we, we can express this. We rearrange this now, we express this in terms of IGR. So IGR becomes this, yeah, net income multiplied by 1 minus D divided by assets minus net income multiplied by 1 minus d yeah? now we can divide the numerator and the denominator okay by uh, ao yeah so you have this net income divided by ao you divide this by ao here or asset level yeah current asset level and here you divide by ao this is also you divide by ao so you can actually summarize this yeah you can actually summarize this so it becomes like this yeah Net income over asset is actually ROA. Yeah? Therefore, this is ROA. Okay, this is one, and this is also ROA. Yeah? Therefore, this formula you can't see it very clearly. Okay, if I push it down slightly, okay, now I, I suppose you can see it. Yeah? Okay, this is ROA multiplied by one minus D. All this divided by 1 minus ROA multiplied by 1 minus D. Yeah? D is, again, I repeat, is the dividend payout ratio. Yeah? In the book, the book uses ROA multiplied by B. Yeah? B is the retention ratio. Retention ratio and the dividend payout ratio are opposites. Yeah? So this is 1 minus D is actually the retention ratio. Yeah? D is actually 1 minus B, which is the dividend payout ratio. Yeah? So it's just the opposite, yeah. But uh, I prefer using uh, D rather than B because usually in a problem the dividend payout ratio will be given, yeah, and not the retention ratio. All right. So that is internal growth rate, and we try and apply this yeah, in this uh, particular example in Tasha Toy Emporium. Okay. So ROA is actually one thousand one hundred eighty-five. This is the profit. Divided by total assets, 11,500. Uh, 11, so you get uh, roughly 10.3% yeah, is your ROA. Your retention ratio is 1 minus the dividend payout ratio. Therefore, dividend payout ratio is 40%. Therefore, this is 0 0.6. So if you apply this formula for internal growth rate, you find that the internal growth rate is about 6.59%. All right. So... This is 6.59%. That is the internal growth rate. Yeah? Okay, that's how you compute the internal growth rate. Now, what is the significance of this internal growth rate? Yeah? So, remember, okay, this internal growth rate tells you that if the sales grow at this rate, the company will be able to finance this growth yeah, in assets by using only the internal sources of funding. Okay, there is no need for external sources of funding. That is the uh, point of this internal growth rate. Yeah. Okay, and we can demonstrate this. Yeah, by looking at uh, this uh, problem uh, in Excel. Yeah? We'll try and express uh, see this in Excel. All right. Yeah? So we know that uh, the growth rate is about six point five nine percent. Yeah, the IGR. Therefore, let's demonstrate this. Yeah? We go back to Tasha Toy Emporium and we found that the IGR yeah, is 5.69%. Uh, Therefore, the sales level yeah, 
will increase to 5329.50. This is actually an increase of 5.96. How do you get this value? You take 5000 multiplied by 1 plus uh, 0 0.053 uh, 5369. Yeah? Okay, so you get this value. Yeah? 5329.50. Yeah? So the cost will also go up at the same rate, increases. Yeah? All these will increase by IGR. Okay, you can compute this. Then 40% of profit will be uh, paid out as dividend. So this much will be uh, retained. Yeah? Profit that will be retained. Yeah? It will be 757.86. Now all these assets, yeah, because they are, the company is operating at full capacity, all these assets must also increase by uh, the internal growth rate. Yeah? Because sales increase by that rate, okay, uh, assets must also increase by the same rate. Yeah? Okay, now here we assume that this all this yeah, because no liabilities or equity will change automatically. Yeah? That was the assumption under IGR and also yeah, the next rate. So all these will not change, therefore this will remain the same. Yeah? Note that these values are the same as the values here. Okay, therefore all these will not change. Right, so what happens to the uh, retained earnings? Retained earnings will be 3,100 plus the new yeah, retained earnings okay, for the year 757.86. So you get 3857.86. When you add all this, yeah, you find that this value, total liabilities and equity, will be exactly the same as the total assets here. Yeah? And therefore, there is no EFN. Yeah? External financing needed will be zero. Yeah? That is what this IGR means. Okay, here it means if the sales grow at IGR, which is which was what we computed earlier. Yeah? We computed that this was uh, five point three uh, three nine. Yeah, slightly more than five percent. If it grows at that rate, okay, assets will also grow at that rate. Okay, but the financing, yeah, no financing will be coming from external sources. Yeah, no liabilities and equity except for the internal funding. Yeah? There will be retained earnings. The retained earnings will be enough to increase, yeah? uh, fund the increase in assets. And no other financing will be required. Yeah? So that is why this rate is called the internal growth rate. Yeah? That means the growth rate is supported only through internal means. Yeah? That means retained earnings. And no other funding will be required. Okay, and this is a very important benchmark rate. Yeah, that means if the company has difficulty obtaining external funds, this is the rate of growth that a company can manage yeah, using internal sources. Okay, so this can be considered as a minimum yeah, growth in sales okay, without the need for external funding. That is the utility of IGR, yeah, internal growth rate. Now we move on to the next rate, yeah. Uh, but before that, yeah, let's let's look at this uh, example. Same example. We have uh, we are looking at the same example here, Tasha. But then with IGR, yeah. We're going to explain this IGR. So this change in sales will be only growing at the internal growth rate, yeah, not at 10%, yeah, so that's different. The net income will increase to this level, right? Dividend policy remains the same, 40% will be paid out, 60% will be retained. So this is rounded to the nearest dollar, yeah, 758 will be retained. Now this change in assets will be 758. Note that yeah, these two are the same, yeah. Therefore, this change in liabilities and equity will be exactly the same as this, and this is completely funded by retained earnings. Therefore, there is no external funding needed. Yeah? So, the financing policy, there is no uh, there is no need for external funding. Yeah? That is uh, Dasha's IGR. Yeah? Now, we move on to the next growth rate. Yeah? There are two important growth rates here and these are considered as the benchmark growth rate. The first one is internal growth rate or IGR. The second one is SGR or sustainable growth rate. Yeah? Now, this sustainable growth rate is the growth rate uh, in sales and assets funded only with internally generated funds, just like IGR. 
retained earnings and no external equity. Note this, yeah? previously there was no external funds, yeah? but here it means no external equity and only proportionate external liabilities. That means the company can use external sources of liability, but the increase in liability must be proportionate. That means the debt equity ratio remains the same. Yeah? So there are two sources of funding here. Yeah? This is called sustainable. Yeah? Sustainable growth rate is the increase in sales and assets that are funded by internally generated funds. This will be internal equity and external debt. Okay, with the condition that the debt equity ratio remains proportionate, meaning it remains the same. Yeah, right. So if that is the case, we go back to the previous uh, equation. Yeah. So GS, the growth rate in sales when it is SGR or sustainable growth rate, then EFN yeah will be equal to liabilities because liability must go at this rate yeah, as proportionate rate, the same rate. Okay, the liability must grow at this rate as well. Yeah? So we replace these two in the equation. This is EFN, which is this. Then we, re uh, we replace the G yeah, with SGR here. Yeah? So this is the equation that we get. Now we can rearrange like what we did just now. Okay, we uh, express this in terms of SGR. Okay, so you get this value. Okay. The only difference between this and IGR is that IGR had no L, yeah? otherwise it's the same. Yeah? Okay. Then what you do next is, okay, this uh, we need to bring it down slightly yeah? because you can't see the equation below. Okay, yeah? Note that here, A uh, minus L, yeah? assets minus liability is equal to equity. Yeah? So we can replace these with equity. So this becomes simple. Yeah? Now note that with IGR, this was NI multiplied by 1 minus D, A, yeah? 0 minus NI, 0 multiplied by 1 minus D. Here you have, instead of A, you have EO, yeah? equity level at time 0. Okay, that's the difference. Yeah? Now, you divide the numerator and the denominator by E. Okay, so you divide this and divide here as well and you divide here as well. Yeah, But note that ni over e is actually roe all right therefore sgr is actually equal to roe multiplied by 1 minus d all this divided by 1 minus roe multiplied by 1 minus d yeah now this is similar to igr yeah? the only difference between igr and sgr is that in igr you don't have roe but you have roa okay here you have roe Otherwise, it's the same. Yeah? Therefore, it's easier to remember the formula. But anyway, the formula of sheet will be given in the mid semester test and the final exam. Yeah? So you don't have to memorize the formula, but you need to know what it means. Yeah? Now, let's apply this in Tasha Toy Emporium. Yeah? So here you need to compute ROE. ROE is the profit or net income, uh, 1185 divided by. Uh, the level of equity, which is uh, 5,100. Yeah? So it's roughly 23.24% uh, the ROE. Yeah? But the uh, retention ratio is 0 0.6. Okay, 0 0.61 minus 40% is 60%. So you replace this in this formula here. The sustainable growth rate is, it works out to be 16.2% roughly. Yeah? What does that mean? Yeah. Okay, it means that okay, if the sales grow by 16.2% for Tasha Toy Emporium. Okay, and this 16.2% growth in sales and assets, yeah, assets will also grow at this rate, can be funded using internal funds or internal uh, or retained earnings, internal funds or internal equity, and proportionately uh, proportionate increase in debt, yeah, external debt. Okay, and this uh, is uh, the rate that the company can attain. Yeah? Right. So uh, let's look at this in terms of uh, this diagram. Yeah? But before this, we need to look at uh, the uh, Excel, but this video is coming to an end. Yeah? So we'll uh, look at the Excel outcome in the next uh, clip.